Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, HJ, welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be taking you guys through what was announced during Back to Hogwarts, which was a couple of days ago. I personally did not have time to check out these announcements for some things because I was busy doing live streams on here. I read a chapter from each of the Harry Potter books for Harry's journey to Hogwarts in that specific year. So they are in a playlist called Harry Potter on my channel if you want to go check them out. I also had some lovely conversations with people from around the world, which was pretty incredible. But today I'm going to look at this article and then do more deep dive for you guys to see if I can find any more information about this. Um, so I have an article here saying everything revealed during the Back to Hogwarts 2024 event. It's hard to believe that Back to Hogwarts has already been and gone. It's insane. The first thing that's come up is that they're introducing a Hogwarts Express adventure which is sent to launch next year and it's by the company that did the real life Polar Express, that like they brought the Polar Express to life. Um, so it says the experience will bring the magic of the iconic train journey to life devel developed by real events. Fans will board a real life moving train immersing themselves in a family friendly adventure that captures the journey to Hogwarts. And while details remain limited, the promise says to be a significant attraction for Harry Potter fans. Now obviously here in the UK we have the Glenfiddich Viaduct which is the Jeffrey Wright steam train which you can also board and cross that iconic Glenfiddich Viaduct which is more iconic for the bit in Chamber of Secrets where they fly the Ford Anglia over it. That's the main viaduct. Uh, a lot of people um, love going on that train every year. I still haven't been on that train and I live near it. Um, but we had a lot of problems with the Glenfinn Viaduct recently and the train was cancelled and things but I think it's fine now. When you go on to there it comes up with this and you can sign up for any announcements. I'm guessing this is probably going to be more American based um, which I, I think is great because obviously like I said here in the UK we already have the Glenfinn Viaduct so we don't really need something like this over here but for those in America that can't get over um, and you want to get your own Hogwarts experience it would be really really cool so I do like that. And the next thing that said is expanding to new mediums with Harry Potter Wizards of Baking a competitive series which is going to be hosted by Fred and Doris themselves, James and Oliver Phelps and it's come to the Food Network and Max. So it's a competitive baking show, obviously like I said titled Harry Potter the Wizards of Baking. It's going to be filmed at the studio tour in Leaves in. That is amazing and it's granting contestants access to the Great Hall, apart from Ninety Quarters, Green Guts Wizarding Bank, and the Weasley family home, the Burrow. Oh, that's cute. In this magical competition, bakers will strive to recreate some of the most memorable culinary delights featured in the Harry Potter films. Oh my god. <gasps> Can you imagine? Oh, if you could. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm salivating. Um, uh as alongside their own innovative creations inspired by the wizarding world. So I'm guessing we're going to be seeing some foxes, we're going to be seeing some Hedwigs. I've heard someone say in one of the live chats that they're going to do the Whomping Willow and I'm like if that as a cake, stick a Ford Angley in there, make it all edible. Oh my god. I'm like yes. Um, Mandrakes, yep, that is insane. The premiere date has not been revealed yet but they're guessing it's going to be for the holiday season so like obviously Christmas is a time for baked goods and get little wizard, wizards, <laughs> witches and wizards baking which is incredible but I always get so hungry and je like jealous that I can't make stuff like that and hungry because cake, I don't need any to say anything else, cake. <laughs> so that's cool. I love always how the Felt twins are so still along with so many others like so invested in the Harry Potter franchise and they've not like just left it. It's I love that like like Ivana Lynch and Warwick Davies, Matthew Lewis and Tom Felton. Like I love how they all have just still continued to make the magical world thrive. It's so cool. I love it so much. And now as I'm filming this it's September 3rd so Harry Potter Quidditch Champions is out. Here we go people. Time for some Quidditch. This is the game I think everyone has totally been waiting for. Just a solid single Quidditch game. I don't know how good I'd be at it. I'm hoping maybe you can change. I've not looked a lot into this because I don't have a games console myself, sadly. I do not own one. Um, so I still have also not played Hogwarts Legacy. And I believe this is the game why everyone thinks we don't have Quidditch in Hogwarts Legacy. Because they wanted a single Quidditch game and they were already developing this and they said to them, 
can you just not put Quidditch in? I mean, you can still fly a broomstick, which is enough. You can still do that. But I think obviously everyone wants to play Quidditch. So maybe they might have it in Hogwarts Legacy 2 now that this game has come out. I'm hoping maybe you can switch between positions so you don't have to keep being a seeker or a chaser that all year and you can try a bit of both. Um, I'm excited that everyone can play their own house and it's not going to have to be as hardy because obviously I think in the games, the old games, we obviously did play a little bit of Quidditch, but obviously you had to play as Harry Potter um, and everyone can choose their own house, which is really cool. And I'm hoping maybe there's like a live tournament sort of thing going on the consoles and that like earn points and stuff. That'd be really cool. Next thing that was revealed was more about, more behind the scenes of the epic universe for Harry Potter that's coming in 2025. It kind of showed us a little sneak peek at what the ride's going to look like, like the queuing, like obviously you'll pass Umbridge's office because um, the idea of the whole ride is that Umbridge is finally going on trial for what she's done. So you're going through like a queue, you're probably going to be going through the ministry, you're going to be going through her office. You see her house elf, which is impressive because there's not a lot of house elves mentioned in the films besides Dobby and Creature and we miss out a few so that's very interesting how we're going to see her house elf yes we're going to go into her office and yes they said there will be plenty of um, cat plates with animated little creatures moving in them so cute and they revealed Emilda Sontin is back as Umbridge like she's actually filmed it like it's not AI or computer generated it's her she said yes what you see in that ride is her. I could not believe it. That is insane. Still no word about if, because obviously it says we're joining Harry in that. So I'm, there's no word about what they're doing with them. They possibly might be AI, might have to use some of that for that. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. I believe it's called Harry Potter and the Battle of the Ministry. But the way the ride looks, it's like a scale they've never attempted before. Like you go and you sit in the box for the trial and it looks like you get lifted and you're sitting in a huge rectangular shape seating area and it moves. Sort of the idea of the Hogwarts ride, the Forbidden Journey, where you move. I believe it's almost like that, but it's bigger and grander and they're building like a life scale Ministry of Magic to go along with this ride. So it's going to be very impressive. Hopefully one day I can go over and see it, but I don't know. But I love how she... I'll just it's back. Love the actress, hate the character because she plays the character so well we hate her, which is the whole point. She's a legend. It's that Puma, the shoe brand, have released a Harry Potter themed collaboration with WNBA star Brenna Stewie Stewart and it's set to relief be released on the 6th of September. A brand new trainer design that blends the magic of basketball with the wizarding world. The collaboration offers fans a unique way to show their love for sport and Harry Potter. I'm not a big shoe fan, I don't really go for trainers or um, things like that. They don't look like something I would buy, I'm not going to lie, so if you are a Harry Potter fan and you love your sneakers maybe this should be one to grab hold of for future, maybe just to keep nice for an investment later on, as most people like to do that. Um, if you're a Puma collector, it'd be one of those things just to add to your collections. There's a new festive book, Christmas at Hogwarts, um, and it's set for release. There's not much there in this article, so I'm going to look it up for you guys just now. Apparently, according to Wikipedia, it's set to be released on the 15th of October. And if you go into Wizarding World, which I'm sure most of you have, there is an article about it, just in case you guys want to check it out for yourselves. Uh, this new festive illustrated book promises to be a yuletide delight for Harry Potter fans. Get ready for Christmas at Hogwarts with artwork by Ziyu Gao coming later this year from Scholastic and Bloomsbury alongside other translations. Christmas at Hog Hogwarts is crammed with cheerful seasonal drawings focusing on Harry Potter's first time staying at Hogwarts for the Christmas holidays. Beijing-born illustrator Gao spoke of the immersive visual experience this book will take you on. Though the owl delivering my acceptance letter to Hogs made miss me, I consider myself immensely fortunate to become one of the illustrators of this beloved series of books, contributing to the construction of its world with my own vision, she said. In this book, I've woven together elements from the enchanting wizarding world and traditional Christmas festivities I wish to bring an immersive visual experience for every child and adult longing to spend a happy Christmas alongside Harry and his friends at Hogwarts. But Amazon already have it up for like twelve ninety nine plus two ninety nine delivery. Uh, Waterstones at sixteen ninety nine according to this. Um, so I'm not sure how big this book is actually going to be. 
if it's just for Philosopher's Stone slash Sorcerer's Stone. Here's an example of some of the artwork and it actually looks very beautiful. I love a good illustration. I love a good different interpretation of the Wizarding World. Like I say, Jim K, Mina Lima, they all done different interpretations. So it's nice to get someone else's interpretation as well. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a little illustrated book of maybe the chapter because there's like little, um, when you look at this photo, right there, well, you can't really see it, but there are words there. This. So I'm guessing it's going to be like a little kid book. Not kid book, you know what I mean. It's going to be like a little book just depicting the Christmas season in Philosopher's Stone. Since I think everyone considers Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets Christmas films, so they watch some more at Christmas time. And then there's one with Harley and Ron opening their presents, which is really cute. I do like the way Harley's drawn. It's very giving anime, but not as much anime. But I do like the style of that. So that's coming out in October, which would be a cute little Christmas gift for um, Little Witches, which is also adults if you want to collect and you're into collecting illustrated books. There's also From the Wisdom Archive, narrated by Ivana Lynch, Luna Lovegood, and is now available as an ebook and an audiobook. And I will insert the picture here because I've seen it, I see it here. It says From the Wisdom Archive's Curated writing from the world of Harry Potter, volumes one and two. I'm going to get another art cup, see if there's anything more about it. It's a book series, so it's there's volumes one and two. In this August, I'm guessing it's already been released. Get ready for an ebook and audiobook from the Wizarding Archive. This project gathers J.K. Rowling's writing from Pottermore turned into WizardingWorld.com, all in one handy place with Harry Potter star Vanna Lynch joining a cast of four narrators. Very exciting hour has dropped by with some news from Potter. More publishing today with the team announcing a fresh created selection of J.K. Rowling's creative work. Release, it's already out. It was released on the 29th of August. You'll be able to dig into 80 articles and anecdotes that write the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, including backstories and big characters and additional context of stories you might not have known. Wizarding Archive is available to pre-order in English and ebook and digital book formats. Each piece of writing will be linked together with some fresh editorial observations from a Portmore publishing team alongside a heartfelt word from self-confessed superfan Vanna Lynch herself. And if you're unsure where to begin, there, there's a lot of information to get a hand on. There is even a friendly inf infograph to help you find your wisdom gateway. So this is like a little CD. So just, I think it's almost like how in Pottermore, every time there was articles and new information getting released, you go to Pottermore and find out things you never knew before. So I guess this is just a way of combining them all together and, and putting it in a way that you can understand where each bit comes into the story and how it has the impact on the story, which is very interesting. And Harry Potter the Exhibition is heading to Boston and Madrid this year. And I believe there's a Yule Ball in Mexico this year. So I'm so jealous. I, oh, I want to go to Yule Ball so bad. Bring it to London or somewhere close near me. Um, and it says, Fantastic Beast, the Wonder of Nature has opened in Taipei. And Harry Potter... Um, a Forbidden Forest experience, which I also really want to go to, but I was nowhere near one and I don't drive and I wish they could bring one to Scotland somewhere. Um, is coming to Washington DC, Austin and Montauban, all, all allowing more fans to explore magical creatures in a forest setting. And I really want to do that so bad because you get to cast Patronus and it looks so good. It looks so good. I also heard that they have remastered the Lego games. I, like I said, I've was I don't have console, but I did love playing PlayStation things back then, but I never really was into Lego. So I don't know how much I heard, like a couple of people said to me on the live stream that they weren't very impressed with that. Um, that the game was just remastered and re-edited for Xbox and things, which is great because it keeps it updated and keeps it playable. But if fans aren't getting anything new out of it, it seems like a little bit of a waste. And there's also new Lego sets. The burrows come out, uh, which I won't. I want to get my hands on it somehow, but I've got no room. I don't make room. Uh, <laughs> and I believe that is everything. There was also, I have to bring this up because obviously it was announced that there was no event at King's Cross this year. They did it virtually, um, but it was, I think it was the bit with Sam Thompson, is that his name? I think that was pre-filmed at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. And they did do a countdown at the platform and three quarters on the, on the day at Leavesden because I saw an Instagram clip of someone and they had the all aboard the Hogwarts Express is leaving and they had that but a lot of fans went to King's Cross anyway 
to see maybe if they were lying or if it would still happen, but it did not. And there was a load of booze, um, like people going boo, and it was just like, oh dear. But they did say it wasn't happening, but that obviously would not stop Harry Potter fans from going. Um, me and Leon hosted a meet and greet, which I didn't get to go to sadly, but I know a bunch of my Harry Potter friends did and it looked like a really cool day. And in New York, they held uh, Back to Hogwarts at Grand Central and Bonnie Wright went. Ginny Weasley was there to let the countdown happen, which was really cool. A lot of events around the world happened. So, like there was in Spain, Tokyo. It was insane to see it. That This is the one day that where I think everyone just n no, realises that Harry Potter is just like, for everyone, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you do, um, Harry Potter is home and Hogwarts is home and we're all, what's the quote Dumbledore says? We all may come from different countries and speak in different tongues, but our hearts beat as one. Pretty much sums up the Harry Potter community in a whole. So that was it guys, that was everything that happened for Back to Hogwarts. Are you guys looking forward to any of these? Let me know in the comments down below and I will see you all next time.